What is up guys, welcome back to the channel. Today's reaction video, it's, a, it's an old friend isn't it? He is an old friend. It's the first time we've reacted to him since we've done the video. It is. <laughs> I couldn't think of what I was going to say then. Yeah, it's kind of weird seeing, like, reacting to him now, seeing that we've talked to him. Yeah, definitely. Hopefully you guys enjoyed the collab. We really enjoyed it, didn't we? Yeah. Um, we've seen a few other people's reactions to it as well, and they seem to enjoy it, which is awesome. Smash that like button, guys. Smash that subscribe button. What is the light goal for today? 1.8. 1.8. Smash that like button, guys. Smash that subscribe button. And are you ready to watch Seven Waves? British and American restaurants are very different. I think fast service is going to be in here, isn't it? Yeah. And tipping. I think it's going to be in. Them two are going to be in here, and then we'll find out what is yeah. the rest of it. Let's go. And I'm sure to some degree there'll be places in Britain that sell Chicago-style pizza, even though it's nothing like it. We get the cheap Or one. even in my birthplace <laughs> of Cleethorpes, Chicago-style burgers, whatever that wow. is. Wow. Is that a thing? Chicago burgers? I don't think so. Hello, Let's I'm know. Lawrence and I'm on a quest to uncover all of the memos that Britain and America lost in the pond. And one of those memos pertains to restaurants. And because food is involved, restaurants happen to be a kind of central hub for where British and American differences play out more broadly. Because we see differences in not just the food, but the terminology that's used and some of the customs that are practiced and the practices that are custom. And of course, the mere concept of a restaurant, I don't know why I'm doing that, the mere concept of a restaurant is universal. But the way that they are presented to and used by Brits and Americans is subtly and sometimes not so subtly different. And so here are seven ways in which British and American restaurants are very different. For Brits moving to okay. or even visiting the United States of America, one of the biggest culture shocks, at least for me, was the kind of round-the-clock attention that servers pay to their customers. What's that? Your glass of water is empty. We can't be having that. American servers come right on over, minus the whistling sound, usually. <laughs> and in between that and a bite of your broccoli, American wait staff will be over just to simply ask, How's that food tasting? Can I get you anything else? Golly gee, that's a nice accent. Which part of Australia are you from? Those kind of questions. Whereas British wait staff are staff that, you know, wait. Wait to come over until you're all done. And part of this yeah. is tied to the notion of tips and tipping. In Britain, you do get the odd time where we go, oh, is everything okay, yeah. don't we? But it's probably once. Once the whole time. You're once there. the entire time. Definitely. Other than that, I agree with once. Yeah. It is, here's your food. What do you want to drink? Boom. See you later, alligator. Yeah, I feel like maybe in Jersey it's more a thing that they come over. Yeah, maybe Jersey because it's more. Jersey, I feel like at every restaurant I've been to, they do come over and they're like, is everything okay? But it is once. Yeah, and I think it is more because it's but just then, a small like, community. In the UK, I can't, when we've been out for dinner, like when we go out with your dad and stuff. Oh, they just leave you to and it. I don't think anyone's ever come over and asked. No, nah, they leave you to it and then you just eat and then you've got to get their tents up. I want the bill, please. Yeah. I want to go home. It takes ages. <laughs> it takes absolutely ages. Britain, contrary to popular belief, servers do make a bulk of their income from tips. But unlike in America, tipping is voluntary and not at all expected. A yeah. lot of Brits who come to the United States, myself included, don't know this at first. In my case, I even asked the waiter how much I should tip, so I gave her the 75% she recommended and moved on. <laughs> of course, with time, I came to learn that the expected amount here in the United States of America is 15-20% to 20 is of your bill and or check will come onto terminology later. It's Check often been noted, bill. especially within the fast food mm -hmm. industry, that portion sizes in the United States of America are much larger than their European counterparts. But often, depending on where you go, this can also be true of sit-down restaurants. Okay. One of the first major American mm -hmm. sit-down chain restaurants that I visited was a little place called Applebee's. And at the likes of Applebee's, but also the Olive Garden or TGI Friday or any number of other chains, your appetizer almost feels like a main course slash entree. Again, terminologies later. And by by the time that the actual main course arrives, you eat it merely out of politeness while pretending that this is all fine. And then, this is the really funny bit, they ask you if you want to see the dessert menu. <laughs> and of course you can't say no because you're addicted to cheesecake. And that's always humongous and rich as opposed to humongous and poor, which is what you are when you leave the restaurant. <laughs> Except that cheap joke doesn't quite work because American food on the whole is actually cheaper compared to the food served in Britain, which is okay. partially how you account for the portion size difference. That's where the now, tip comes after a while, in, I noticed that there were Americans all around me that instead of plowing through this mountain of calories in one sitting, answered yes to what was then an unfamiliar question to me. That's right, it's completely- Ooh, no what do you call it? Doggy. Doggy, doggy bag. bag. Not or, the doggy. <laughs> yeah, doggy bag. Or um, like if, if I'm eating and I'll say, could I have this to go? Yeah, can I have a box to go with this or something like that? Yeah, which I think is weird that it's new to Lawrence because I feel like, if I never, if I don't ever finish my food, which is 
quite like quite a lot. Yeah, yeah. We're not big um, eaters. At all the like, even growing up, always would be you take it back home. I guess maybe we're the exception because again, smaller portion sizes in the UK. Maybe we're just an exception where we don't finish all our food all the time. But so, then even growing up, like my my sisters, my mum. Would... No, I know you mean. I guess maybe I'm, I'm just trying to think. Maybe because the portion size is so much bigger, there's so much more food to take home. Maybe. I I I'm with you. I've always known it. Mm. It's weird, isn't it? Weird. Let us know in the comments if you're from the UK or if you've been to the UK and. It was normal to have a doggy bag, because I think it is. But what do you call it? I feel like Lawrence is going to tell us. But what do you call it? <laughs> normal in the United States of America to have your food boxed at the end of the meal with the intention of you taking it home and refrigerating it. Or just eat it later that night if you're feeling lucky. Yeah. Of course, now that makes sense, right? I mean, you've paid your money for that food. You want to get your money's worth. But on top of that, it cuts down on waste. But at first, just because of what I was used to back home, it seemed weird to be taking leftovers home from a restaurant. In Britain, wow. as evidenced by this BBC article from a few years back, we've historically felt embarrassed even to ask Ask for a box or a doggy bag because we are, I don't know, I haven't a clue why. Actually. It's more common. Either way, I think leftovers are great to the extent that I have Indian food for breakfast. Don't judge me. <laughs> I don't blame buffets, him. <laughs> aside from the fact that America seems to be just a tad more into them than Britain, there's an aspect of the buffet going experience that differs greatly between the two countries. Where I was from, depending on the buffet in question, I almost got the impression that it was rude to the kitchen staff to ask for a new plate when you're going up for seconds. In other words, whenever okay. I went for, say, a Chinese buffet, I would go up, get my plate, scoop on all the food, go back to my table, realise that I am unrelentingly gluttonous, and then go back up for seconds using the same plate. It made me feel good that while devouring lots of solids, I'd done a solid to the kitchen staff. That could be taken so many ways. <laughs> Whereas once I moved to the United States, I realized that this was considered either weird or unhygienic. At American buffets, customers are expected to get a new, cleaner plate when they go up for seconds because this is a measure seen at preventing cross-contamination. Okay. But I have to say, after practicing both methods, neither has caused me any personal problems. But while we're on the subject of Chinese food, that brings us on to this. Before we see the next one, oh, we've got an ad as well, so we'll skip in a second the ad. Um, I've always got a new plate. I don't think I've ever gone up for seconds. Oh, we literally went for car with you the day. We I suppose we didn't go for seconds. We went for breakfast, didn't we, instead? Um, sorry, dessert instead and start. Yeah, but obviously you're going to get a new plate. Yeah, for the start no, that's a good dessert. point. But, oh, I don't know why we had plate. But had we'd had our Sunday carvery and then gone up for a second road, okay. I would have taken my... I would. So when we were on holiday, yeah. new plate or different plate? I went up for a new plate. I went up for a new plate. Because also, they come and take it away a lot of the time because mm. you look like you're finished. So yeah. then you go up and get a new plate. I've yeah. never used the same plate. I'm sure I have like a Pizza Hut. Oh, maybe. Oh, pizza, maybe. Hut pizza Hut buffet. I definitely yeah. have like a Pizza Hut. Maybe it depends where you are. But also, I feel like that kind of. So, at the. On holiday, this is the examples. Yeah. On holiday, the plates weren't at your table, they were at the buffet. Place. Yeah, you already grabbed them and you at went. At Pizza Hut, the plates were on your table. Okay. There's no extra plates up there, so you no, don't. No, so use you it. don't. Yeah. You wouldn't go, can I have a new plate? Yes, we, yes, I agree. But then agree, if yeah, they're yeah. there, like you're just obviously going to take a new plate, aren't you? Yeah, if it's not on display, we're not going to ask. If it's on display, we'll probably grab a new one. Yeah, but now this is made me really want to have buffet food. I know, it's I want to go back on holiday <laughs> the buffet food. That brings us on to this. I think it's fair to say Ethnic that in both food. Britain okay. and America, ethnic food or food that is usually associated with a country that is not this one is extremely popular. Yeah. And to varying degrees, no matter if you're talking about the United States or Britain, the same countries are often represented at the dinner table. Off the top of my head, the big one is Chinese food. Mm. Except you guessed it, British Chinese food and American Chinese food is vastly different. In Britain, Chinese food is often spicy, sometimes curry-based. In the okay. US, on the other hand, Chinese food tends to be centered around standalone fried meats, usually of the chicken variety. Now, these are not entirely mm. absent from Britain, but one way that America differentiates itself is that its Chinese food tends to be a lot sweeter than in Britain. But whichever way you slice it, I planned that. Both British and American Chinese cuisine is a modified version of what actual Chinese people eat in China. And this seems to be a common theme that actually unites Britain and America. Take before, I would argue that I it know. depends on what you order. Exactly, I know because you're waiting for it. <laughs> I don't order anything curry related. Me neither. Like, I'm duck all the way, duck all I'm the way. Chicken chow mein, egg fried rice, spring rolls. There's, it's so dry you couldn't get any. 
<laughs> and we're too fair we can't comment on the sweetness because we haven't tried each but others. i do add sweet sour sauce to my rice you do but we, we can't compare like the sweetness because no, we, we haven't but... but i would say like the chicken thing like like sweet and sour chicken and stuff like that those i think they are chicken. in there aren't they we have that over here we yeah. and we eat and like if i could eat that much food i would add sweet and sour chicken rolls <laughs> to my but the other stuff's enough but yeah i don't think no, i've definitely. ever known anyone to order a curry from a chinese uh, yeah i mean i think a, a lot of people have curry sauce with things curry yeah, sauce is a quite a big thing but isn't it not a curry it'd be an indian you'd get curry yeah curry. it's just all it depends what you like isn't it so again not sure on that one Lance, no. but we're, we're on him today aren't we we're on him yeah. but we still like it Lance, don't we <laughs> take for example indian food while it should be pointed out that indian food is more widely eaten in britain than in the united states mm, it's popular. and that in my experience certain indian curries tend to be spicier than their american counterparts neither is anywhere near as spicy as authentic indian on the other hand in terms of everything i just said there almost the exact opposite it is true of Mexican food. America, by virtue of its neighborly status with Mexico, eats way more Mexican food than Britain it's not that does. Big, is it? Even if, by all accounts, tacos and the like have started to make waves in Britain. But even America's version of Mexican food is often a departure from what's eaten south of the border, with authentic Mexican food often less spicy than Americans are used to. Like and it was in the restaurants Mexican of America food. that I got a first hand feel for how America likes to modify the national dishes of other countries to create what amounts to their own version because okay. they even do this with English cuisine and that brings us on to this. Oh what do you reckon we have for us? Pub food. Roast. Yeah. Oh, Sunday roast maybe pub food. Fish and chips. Fish and chips. Yeah obviously that's Fish and cool. chips. On the Mexican food um, I think it's becoming bigger in the UK but it's I don't know. definitely not that big. I don't think I I've not noticed. I, I haven't noticed but taco thing, tacos are definitely becoming more common Compared to, let's say, five years ago. I feel like they're not as... Air Mex is about now as well. They're not as Mexican, though, are they, as Mexican? But, oh, yeah, obviously like, not. They're like the UK's... The UK's equivalent. version. But before, probably five years ago, there were hardly any. So it's slowly creeping in. Maybe it'll get really Mexican at some point. Mm. You never know. Yeah. We'll see. If you were to ask National me to name dishes, three okay. dishes from both countries, off the top of my head, I would say this. For Britain... Fish and chips, Sunday roast, and a full English breakfast. Oh, For America, like hamburgers, it. hot He's dogs, and pizza. It. And He's yes, I realise that all of those have disputed or undisputed origins in Germany and Italy. But over time, they have become synonymous with the United States. But to a lesser degree, and because of American influence, hamburgers, hot dogs, and pizza can all be found in restaurants in the UK. Yeah. And I'm sure to some degree there'll be places in Britain that sell Chicago-style pizza, even though it's nothing like it. We like, or even we, we in like a little, place of Cleethorpe. We said it before, we like a little Chinatowns, do. don't we? Yeah. People say they're not true ones, but it's yeah. close we get. Chicago style burgers, whatever MC. that is. But in reverse, whenever America tries to replicate popular British dishes, it's sort of like being in an alternate universe. It's great, but it's different. Very rarely okay. do you get fish and chips where the chips slash fries are thick cut and greasy and the Chunky. fish is singular and large. Instead, you usually get three or four smaller pieces of fish that are usually a tad saltier than what you'd expect back okay. home. Different. Or did I mention? There's no mushy peas. Honestly, it's like being in the south of England. You love mushy peas, don't you? You really love mushy There's peas. no mushy peas. Then it's just no. <laughs> <laughs> and in terms of the other two, the Sunday roast and the full English breakfast, well, I found those a lot harder to come by in the US than fish and chips. Even at those pubs that, you know, every state has that purport to be authentically British. No English breakfast. And lastly, Ooh. we can't talk about British versus American restaurant differences without talking about the terminology. You see, it's one thing to get your food boxed at the end of a sit-down meal, but many of us might like to take it home without sitting down in the restaurant in the first place. Take in Britain, away. I always knew this as getting takeaway, take which is why I was profoundly confused when I worked in an American office environment and they talked about the key takeaways from the meeting. I thought I was getting curry and chips. In America, <laughs> this is referred oh, to as takeout or sometimes carry out. I, I do say of... takeout. Sometimes. Yeah, I, I, like I don't last know time. why. I don't know why either. I feel like last time I was like, should we get takeout tonight? Everyone else says takeaway. Maybe it's from the I don't American know why things, I do that. But carry out, never heard of carry out before. Carry out. But there you go portion size we can't even agree on what to call each meal in the u.s for the most part the meal immediately preceding the main meal is usually known Dessert. as an appetizer in britain i always oh, oh i was thinking after sorry yes yeah, although 
it, no, it is called. We do call it a starter. Some menus on the appetizer. menus say appetizer. Not all the time. Fancy ones. Sometimes. Fancy ones do. So it's starter, main course, dessert. Yeah, I'm pretty sure. Or main meal. Where we're going on Friday, that says appetizer. We'll see. We'll take, take a picture. picture. <laughs> the starter, but some, as the French do, might call it an entree. entree. And this is where things get confusing because <laughs> Americans and Canadians alike use the word entree to mean the main meal. For us, the oh, main wow. meal is usually known as the main course. It's if it's a Sunday on. roast, yeah. that main course will include a Yorkshire pudding, and this is where things get <laughs> doubly confusing, because we in Britain also use the word pudding as a catch-all yeah, term for true. dessert. I in fairness, we do that. also interchange... I don't think you have, but I've definitely said... That's definitely pudding. a Northern thing. I think it is a Northern thing, but it, it definitely happens. Is. <laughs> we use the word dessert. In America, the word pudding is more specific, and the catch-all term has been deserted in favour of dessert. And the implements with which we eat this food, i.e. the knife, fork and spoon, is known collectively in the United States as silverware, whereas this word, when used in Britain, would pertain more to ornate metal plates, or perhaps metallic jugs, or sports trophies. A lot of the time, instead, we'll there collectively we refer to cutlery, knives, forks and spoons as cutlery. Like we had and as we all know, it's very... A posh, like, if it's cutlery posh, like, we say... Got the silverware out. Yeah, definitely. It'd be rude to leave a restaurant without paying. And this is why we ask for the bill, or at least we do in Britain. Because yeah. most of the time here in the US, Americans will ask for the check. Okay. And that's it for this episode. Let me know in the comments below if you've been I've realised that I've learned a lot of this from friends. Yeah, definitely. <laughs> definitely. I mean, we always do bill. Um, I, I don't think I've ever said check. It reminds me of like a written check. Yeah, I, I don't think I've ever said, can I have a check? Nah, me neither. I don't but... really say can I have a bill either. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> smash that like button, guys. Smash that subscribe button. Hope you enjoyed that. We did interrupt a bit, but that's what we're here for, aren't we? We enjoy it. Hopefully, you enjoy it. And what should we do? Have a fantastic day. And we'll see you, legends, in the next one. Peace.